It didn't roll in like a car. It didn't hover like a drone. It walked, slowly and powerfully. People didn't blink. They stared, not at a machine, but at something that felt alive, built of steel but moved like muscle. It came from Kawasaki, and it wasn't a vehicle. It was something new, something strange. They call it Koro, a robot, yes, but not like the others. Not built to stay in one place, not built to be silent. This one climbs, runs, breathes steam, and it might just change everything. The Big Reveal at Osaka Expo, April 5th, 2025. Osaka Kai Expo. The crowd gathered, expecting innovation. What they saw was something else. A metallic figure emerged from behind the curtain. Four legs, broad shoulders moving not like a robot, but like a living thing. It didn't glide, it walked purposefully. Eyes followed it in silence. This was Kawasaki's surprise, a machine named Koro. On stage, the CEO spoke of vision, of change, of a future where machines roam, where wheels fail. No one expected a robot shaped like a horse. No one expected it to move so naturally. The Koro wasn't just revealed, it was performed. Kawasaki wasn't showing off a concept. They were announcing a new era, one where robots don't roll across smooth roads, but gallop through snow, gravel, and mud. The presentation didn't rely on hype. The Koro's movement said it all. Reporters whispered. Engineers leaned closer. Some cheered. Others watched in awe. The moment wasn't about specs or stats. It was about presence, about watching something walk that shouldn't be able to. And in that moment, it didn't feel like technology. It felt like a creature, designed, yes, but alive in some strange mechanical way. A new species of mobility. Half beast, half machine. Koro is not a vehicle, and it's not just a robot. It doesn't follow the rules of wheels and treads. It walks on four legs like a creature born for the wild. It balances, it climbs, it adapts. At a glance, it looks like something out of a dream or a myth, something forged in a future that hasn't arrived yet. But it's real. Kawasaki built it that way, not to impress, but to redefine what mobility means. Each leg bends with the grace of an animal. It's not stiff, it flows. The movements aren't pre-programmed stutters. They're fluid, like a panther stalking through a forest. It can leap forward, dodge sideways, or crawl across broken paths without missing a step. This robot doesn't wait for the road. It makes its own path. Mountains, hills, snow, or loose gravel. It keeps moving. And here's what's wild. Its design wasn't shaped by human logic alone. It was modeled after nature, the joints, the balance, even the hooves, all borrowed from living creatures. This is what makes Koro different. It doesn't look like the machines we know. It doesn't move like them either. It's something else, something in between. The power within, hydrogen over electricity. Underneath Koro's sleek frame, something powerful hums quietly. It's not a battery. It's not gasoline. It's hydrogen. This isn't just for show. Kawasaki made a bold choice. Instead of plugging into the electric trend, they tapped into something cleaner, lighter, and faster to refuel. Hydrogen isn't new, but putting it inside a robot like this? That's a first. Here's how it works. Hydrogen combines with oxygen. The reaction creates electricity. The only thing it releases? Water vapor, that's it. No smoke, no fumes, just steam disappearing into the air. Electric robots take hours to charge. Hydrogen fills up in minutes. Koro can travel up to 150 miles on one charge. That's more than enough to cross valleys, forests, even disaster zones. There's another secret. Hydrogen packs more energy into less space. That means Koro can move farther, longer, and with more strength without needing bulky batteries or long charging stops. It's clean, it's quiet, it's efficient. Kawasaki isn't just thinking about the now. They're designing for the world after fossil fuels. And Koro is proof that hydrogen might not just be a backup plan, 
it might be the main event, muscle and motion, engineering that feels alive. Watch Coro move and you'll forget it's made of metal. Every step feels intentional, every shift in weight looks practiced. That's because it doesn't just move, it reacts. Each of its four legs operates independently, powered by precision motors. These aren't just limbs, they're smart. The hooves are where the magic begins. Covered in a special rubber, they grip almost anything. Wet grass, loose gravel, icy stone. Inside, sensors detect the surface, adjust the grip, and send signals to balance the body in real time. It's not stumbling over rocks. It's adjusting mid-stride like an animal reading the ground. Add to that a custom suspension system. When the terrain gets rough, Koro absorbs the shock, keeping itself steady. No bouncing, no tipping, just smooth, controlled movement, even over twisted, broken land. This isn't walking like a robot. This is the motion that mimics life. Engineers studied how horses run, how wild animals leap and land. Then they rebuilt that knowledge in carbon fiber, circuits, and code. The result? A machine that doesn't just function, it flows. Koro isn't riding the future. It's walking there on four powerful living legs, where it belongs, real world. Uses Koro wasn't built for showrooms. It was built for the world. Think of the places wheels can't go. Remote villages, steep mountain trails, flooded fields, cracked roads after an earthquake. That's where Koro thrives. Its strength lies in its ability to move where others get stuck. In logistics, it could deliver supplies across terrain too rough for trucks. In remote regions, it could carry medicine or tools to people cut off by storms. And in search and rescue missions, it could reach survivors that even helicopters can't spot. Now picture it on a farm. Crossing muddy fields, hauling crops, or scanning soil conditions. Koro could help monitor harvests, carry equipment, and make agriculture smarter without harming the land. Tourism is another frontier. Guided treks into forests, across hills, or into national parks without roads or noise. Just you, the wild, and a silent robot companion that walks beside you. In disaster zones, it becomes a lifeline. No fuel, no roads, no problem. It moves, it carries, it endures. Koro isn't made to replace cars. It's made for places where cars were never welcome. It fits into nature, not by blending in, but by moving like it belongs there. The roadblock, cost, scale, and supply chains. Koro is impressive, but building one is a lot different from building thousands. Right now, it's a prototype, a glimpse of what's possible. But for it to roam freely across farms, forests, or front lines, Kawasaki has to scale it. And that won't be easy. The materials are high-end. The motors, sensors, and hydrogen engine don't come cheap. Production at scale would need advanced factories, trained workers, and a reliable supply chain, all tuned to perfection. And then there's infrastructure. Hydrogen refueling stations aren't everywhere. In many parts of the world, they don't exist at all. To make Koro practical, Kawasaki must help build that network from scratch or in partnership with others. That takes time, money, and political will. Cost is another challenge. Koro can't just be revolutionary. It has to be affordable. Farmers, responders, and adventurers need a price that makes sense. And right now, cutting edge doesn't always mean cost effective. Still, history shows us something. Every great machine starts as an expensive dream. The first cars were rare. So were computers, even mobile phones. Kawasaki's next task isn't building better legs. It's building a world that's ready to support them. The rivalry. Who's catching up? Kawasaki isn't walking alone. Others are watching. Some are already running. Boston Dynamics comes to mind first. Their robot dog, Spot, has already made headlines. Agile, smart, and widely tested, it's proven that legged machines have real-world value. But Spot runs on electricity. Koro runs on hydrogen. That's a big difference. Then there are the giants, Toyota, Honda, pioneers in hydrogen vehicles. While their focus is on cars, the tech could easily cross into robotics. And if they decide to enter the space Kawasaki just opened, 
competition will heat up fast. Tech giants like Google and Amazon are exploring automation too. They have the money, the talent, and the drive to disrupt anything. Kawasaki has the head start. Koro is unlike anything else out there. But keeping that lead means moving fast, scaling smart, and showing the world it's more than a prototype. The race has begun. The question is, who gets there first? Future vision. Is hydrogen the next giant leap? The world is changing fast. Clean energy isn't a dream anymore, it's a demand. Electric cars are everywhere, but hydrogen? It's the quieter contender, and Coro might be its loudest message yet. Hydrogen fuel cells offer something powerful. Range without pollution, speed without charging delays, and energy without compromise. For machines that move, work, and adapt, like Coro, it's a perfect match. The more we explore, the more we need power that travels far into the mountains, across deserts, through crisis zones. Hydrogen makes that possible, but Koro isn't just about fuel, it's about what's next. A future where mobility isn't limited to roads, tracks, or charging cables. If Kawasaki succeeds, this robot could be the first of many. Hydrogen-powered machines moving through forests, farms, cities, clean, quiet, and alive. The leap has started. The path ahead is long, but Koro might just be the first footprint on a hydrogen-powered trail. Koro isn't just a robot, it's a sign of what's coming. A future where machines move with life, not wires. Powered by hydrogen, built to adapt, ready for places no car could ever reach. Will it succeed or stay a beautiful experiment? That's up to what comes next. But one thing's certain. Mobility will never look the same again. What do you think? Drop a comment and don't forget to subscribe for more tech revelations.